So let's start by recognizing that a lot of us don't have access to this information. We don't come from wealth and oftentimes debt might not even be a choice. For those of us who decide to go to school, we kind of have to get into debt in order to be able to get an education, to be able to get a job, to then be able to pay for our debt. <laughs> Welcome or welcome back to Therapy Explained. My name is Anis Cantor. I'm the therapist of color for people of color and your very own mental health cheerleader. As you may already know, I make videos about all things mental health because I believe that mental health information should be free and accessible to everyone. So if you haven't already and would like to help support this cause, make sure to subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up. Every video also comes with its own cheat sheet that I make available to you on Instagram. So make sure that you're following me there at Talk Therapy to get access to yours. Today we're going to be talking about debt, the effects on our mental health that debt has, and how to go about managing it. So let's talk about it. Number one, contextualize yourself. This is something that I encourage you to do regardless of whatever it is that's coming up for you, whether you're dealing with debt or any other sort of issue or emotion that's coming up for you. Because remember that as a person of color, you might very likely not have had access to financial information and education. Our parents come here, our grandparents come here to this country and are solely focused on survival, making sure that there is food and shelter, that we get to go to school and that we're safe and that is it. Outside of that, it can be really difficult to concentrate on anything like savings or what debt is and what credit cards are and how to manage them and what the potential negative consequences may be of getting into debt. So let's start by recognizing that a lot of us don't have access to this information. We don't come from wealth and oftentimes debt might not even be a choice. For those of us who decide to go to school, we kind of have to get into debt in order to be able to get an education, to be able to get a job, to then be able to pay for our debt. <laughs> It just is a whole cycle. And again, as people of color, we just don't have access to this education. So start there. This reframe and contextualizing will help you also be kinder to yourself. I do a lot of the work with my patients on learning self-compassion, and I also talk a lot about it on Instagram, and I'm gonna continue to talk about it here. You must learn to be compassionate with yourself. Understand the reasons why you ended up in debt in the first place. You might have been somewhat aware that credit cards were not a good thing or borrowing money might not have been the best idea, but you may not have felt like you had a choice and maybe you thought that you could handle it. Again, we've never done this before. We don't have this information. There is this big amount of jargon, uh, financial jargon regarding debt and borrowing money and loans and all of that, that we do not understand. It's long and difficult to comprehend. So again, try to show yourself some compassion by trying to first contextualize yourself so that you can understand that regardless of where you're at, it wasn't because you were intentionally trying to get yourself into debt. Number two, keep yourself accountable. This is also a very common topic, not just at the practice or with my clients or on our Instagram. I know I talk about it all the time. Accountability is super important. And yes, self-compassion and accountability can go hand in hand. The first part is contextualizing yourself so that you can be compassionate with yourself and where you're at in your journey. The next part, however, is understanding, okay, I've made some decisions that have led me to a place that I may not be happy to be in. And so now I am responsible for changing these behaviors and finding solutions. There are so many spaces, thankfully, that are built now around the idea of supporting people of color that could be a good resource for you. I'll go ahead and link some down below, some of my favorites down below that are completely free. So educate yourself, try to understand your debt, whatever type that may be, and gain some support in learning how to pay that down. Again, holding yourself accountable and responsible for these decisions, and then also making a plan for yourself to change these behaviors. This is the theme all throughout your mental health. 
it is okay and it is also vital that you are compassionate with yourself but the other part of that is accountability it's what's going to help you actually make changes moving forward so look back come up with a plan and then try to hold yourself accountable so that you can make these changes and address the issue at hand be patient with yourself because while you've contextualized yourself and now you have a plan to move forward, the next part is to understand that that plan might not go well perfectly. There's no such thing. Remember, progress over perfection. So we want to try to be patient with ourselves as we try to work through this plan that we developed. And when we hit barriers or when we recognize that certain behaviors are difficult to adapt or certain parts of the plan just don't work, it's okay. Look at that, try to change it and adjust it so that it fits you and it feels organic to your journey. This can be again applicable to your whole mental health. As you start to make progress and you're trying to develop new coping skills, it's important for you to try to reflect on what's working and what isn't and adjust what isn't so that you can keep moving forward. The whole issue with debt and the emotions that come with it can make it very complicated, but again, it's important for you to try to be patient that this will take time. Even paying down your debt will take time, especially if you have a much larger debt. But what's important is that you have a plan to keep you moving forward and allow yourself to adjust that plan as you continue to grow. Of course, I'm a therapist, so I'm going to recommend that you process the emotions underneath your debt. Again, you might be feeling some shame, some guilt, maybe some frustration and anger towards yourself or other people or the system. Because again, sometimes we find ourselves in debt, not necessarily because we wanted to, but because we felt it was necessary to. So in order for you to be able to move forward, it will be important that you give these emotions the room that they're asking for. Emotions demand to be felt. They will come out in one way or another. If you're trying to avoid your debt and addressing it, you're most likely going to be irritable, um, physically uncomfortable, anxious, difficulty concentrating. It's gonna show up in all these other ways. You might avoid your debt altogether so that you don't have to deal with the negative emotions. You might still be cranky whenever money comes up. You might still have some stress whenever money comes up and that debt will just keep growing and growing and therefore these feelings will get bigger and bigger. So try to make that space to process it. Again, thankfully there are free or low cost groups, support groups, processing groups. You can also consider starting therapy. You know, I'm a big fan of that, of course, so that you can talk about what's happening, process what's happening, and help heal many of the wounds that might be exacerbating or making things worse for you now, emotionally regarding your debt. Remember, if we don't talk about it, if we don't recognize that it's happening, we can't heal it. So if there is a space for you where you can process this, whether that's journaling, therapy, group therapy, a support group, a close friend, or a safe person, do that. Process the emotion because that's also part of what is happening for you in terms of your behaviors regarding your debt. Use coping skills. As you are starting to process your emotions, come up with your plan, trying to be patient with yourself, tell yourself some compassion, you're still going to have uncomfortable feelings. This is not magic and you're still a human being. So you might not exactly feel so motivated and positive as you're starting this journey. So what do we do? This is when your coping skills come in. Now, again, <laughs> this is something that I talk about quite frequently and that is the importance of coping skills having something an activity that you engage in that helps you feel better not just when you're having a hard time but something that you do frequently whether that's at least once a week or once a month every other day if possible because when you're having a hard time and you're feeling dysregulated that activity will come in very handy one, your body will already recognize what you're trying to do whether that's meditation, yoga, journaling, going for a walk, going for a run Again, your body will know, okay, we're trying to regulate and it can transition into that activity a lot easier versus when you're trying to make use of a coping skill that you've never used before, your body won't 
know what you're trying to do. So number one, if you have a good coping skill that you've done before, your body will recognize it and it'll be easier for you to try to self-regulate. And number two, it's because while you're a human being, you might still feel some dysregulation. So it's important that you're taking care of that. Try to be realistic and understand that, again, you might not feel all positive and happy as you continue this process or this healing, but that's when your coping skills come in. They are key throughout your progress, again, regardless of what you're trying to try to manage, but in this instance, any guilt, shame, anger that you might be feeling regarding your debt towards whomever you might be feeling at, your coping skills are key here. And of course, remember that progress does take practice. So if you give any of these ideas, tools, or tips a try, please go ahead and comment down below by letting me know. Now this topic was requested by one of you. So if you have any topics that you'd like for me to cover, please make sure to comment down below and I will add it to my list. Of course, as always, your cheat sheet is already available to you on Instagram. So make sure to hop on over there to get access to it. But before you do, please give this video some love in any way that feels authentic to you. If you like this video and found it valuable, make sure to give it a thumbs up. But of course, again, any comment, like, or subscription does help this channel grow and it increases access to other people to free mental health information and education. And of course, it is always greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and remember, I'm always cheering for you.